Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and break it down to bite-sized pieces. So today, just as the thumbnail suggests, there is some bad news on the horizon, and that's about inflation. In all honesty, the inflation news is pretty bad. It's the most it's been in 30 years, and there's a couple of indicators we're going to take a look at. But that's actually really good news for Bitcoin and the crypto market. I'll explain why. Uh, we're going to take a look at CPI and PPI. We're going to talk about what could potentially uh, be the hedge. Gold? <laughs> Just kidding. And then lastly, we'll get an uh, uh, interview uh, from uh, Jagpreet Singh, who is the founder of Minority Mindset, as he is more in the traditional space moving into crypto. So I'm really curious on his take. So we'll get to all those things. But first, let's take a look at, not the market, I need some help. And that help comes down to this. They are looking for uh, stake pool offering or stake pool providers such as myself, for Cardano, it's the D new stake pool, and Sunday Swap, which you may know is the uh, new DEX that is coming out from Cardano, are actually built on Cardano, and uh, they are looking for stake pool operators. And there is going to be a voting process, which is a pretty good thing as far as decentralization. We're going to ask which ones of these do you trust the most, and which ones are the ones that you'd like to see uh, be a part of the Sunday Swap team. So, if you would be so kind. If you would go over there and vote for D News, that's all I ask for. Now, the thing that I uh, always say is this, is that uh, the thing that spins above my head, Dan teaches crypto, I made things for free. I put all this information out for free as best as I possibly can for instances like this. So if uh, you like the information, you like the uh, education, just do me a favor, go over there to uh, Sunday Swap and help me out. And that's it for that part. And then uh, now let's get into what's going on in the market. So today, a little bit of turbulence, and I'm not gonna go over every coin, I just wanna go over Bitcoin real quick, because really in all honesty, we hit around 300 or 3.1 trillion, something like that, and now we've taken a little bit of a step back. You know people were going to take a little bit of profits, and that is exactly what happened right here. Look at these uh, profit-taking sons, of <laughs> what, what they're doing right here. So you can see right here, this is a, on the four hour candle, look at this. As everything flips over, uh, these are the Bollinger Bands. We're taking a look at uh, the RSI. We were way, way overbought. I mean, eh, not for Bitcoin, actually. 79 isn't that big of a deal. We see more uh, longer than that. But as we go through, RSI kind of drops a little bit. Volume decreases. And then we have these candles go from a little green to a little red. And then look at this one over here. In four hours, we went from 67,000 per Bitcoin all the way down to 62 seven that is a heck of a run and then also if we take a look at what's going on as far as on-chain analysis we're using crypto quant i actually had a a, a great meeting uh with uh key key young su who is the ceo of crypto quant we did an education series videos together i will be releasing those in the weekend and uh he showed me some great things as far as on-chain analysis but the big things that i like to look at is First of all, our miners selling and everything in purple means uh, what the miners are doing. The more the miners, Bitcoin miners sell, the more we see a drop off and that hasn't happened here. So we're looking pretty good. As far as all exchange reserves for Bitcoin, the more Bitcoin that is on the reserves, that means that people are putting it, putting their Bitcoin into the reserves so they can sell it. If they take it off, there's less of the reserves, meaning that they're going to hold on to it. And then, of course, the same demand but uh, less supply and we see what happens. The price usually goes up and that's pretty much what's happening here. And we're down uh, to 2.3, looks like billion. And then, uh, or excuse me, 2.3 million. <laughs> and that's the price. And then lastly, uh, the ETH or Ethereum, we can see that Ethereum, just because of the utility and the gas price and all the dApps are doing, uh, that is just going off the exchanges and also uh, being staked. So Ethereum is going to be rising, I think, rather quickly. And then we're going to talk with Key about all exchange uh, take or buy volume, estimated leverage ratio, which is at the all time. Matter of fact, let me take a look at this. The as far as like leverage and leverage plays, uh, a lot of longs, Bitcoin longs got liquidated. Uh, over half a billion dollars uh, people lost their lost their positions because they went a little bit too long, irresponsibly long, and that's usually what happens. Not that anything wrong with that, it's just that's what happened. And he had a lot of liquidation, so see a little bit of a rebuilding. And uh, also we'll talk about market value to realize value. And it's uh, looking pretty good as far as what we think it should be and what it actually is. So that's what's going on in the market in a nutshell. Let's talk about CPI and PPI. And this is the two indicators that really 
it's it doesn't look good for people out there in the economy itself or in the world because everything's getting inflated away but it's actually really good news for crypto and digital assets unfortunately so here's what's happening and real quick u.s consumer prices jump 6.2 percent in october biggest surge in more than three decades the consumer price index surged 6.2 from a year ago uh, core inflation, stripping out food and energy, just taking out those two big factors, still increased 4.6%, the fastest gain since August 91. Energy, shelter, and vehicle costs led the gains, which more than wiped out the wage increases that workers received for the month. And this is the most insidious part of CPI or inflation. It's the silent, it's a silent tax. And it's really what is going on uh, throughout uh, economies throughout the world. This isn't just an American problem. This is not just a, uh, an EU problem. It's a global problem. Things are inflating at a tremendous pace. And uh, there's a lot of problems. And if you don't have the ability to invest in the assets right now, I mean, it's going to be super tough as time goes on, especially with the winter months are coming up. Uh, you've got a, uh, a shortage for uh, electrical use, for uh, natural gas, coal, so those prices are going to go up astronomically. So what happens? Well, people have to pay more. On top of that CPI, we also had uh, PPI. And the wholesale price or the producer price index rose 8.6% uh, year over year in October, tied for the highest ever. So PPI is the first thing that's where, you know, wholesales and businesses, that's the things that they actually have to buy. And then, of course, consumer price index, that is the second uh, layer to that, which is like, look, if we got to buy a bunch of things as far as like, uh, as far as us as producers, that means you're going to pay even more. And uh, so PPI or CPI follows PPI. The Labor Department's producer price index, which measures wholesale prices, rose half a percent in October, translating into an 8.6 percent uh, year over year. Surging prices for gas and autos to help push the increase, which was uh, told for more goods and services. The reading is one of two important measures coming this week. And of course, we just know what happened with CPI. So here's the big thing. When you see something like this going on and you, and you think to yourself, well, what's going to happen in the long run? I can just tell you this, that the more the things inflate, the more people are looking for a hedge. Because if you're just sitting on cash in the bank, it's not going to work out too well. And here's what I'm talking about. This was actually uh, for my friend James over at Invest Answers. He laid out this great graph. He's like, look, depending on who you talk to, as far as like the core inflation, five to seven percent, right? They said it was transitory. It's been over a year. It's not transitory. And here's what we have. So let me blow this up even more. You see that inflation rate, three, seven, 10, and 15. James and a lot of uh, smart people believe that uh, we're well above 10%. We're roughly in the 15% range. And he just took a million dollars on the uh, upper right-hand corner there and says, well, in a year at 15% inflation, what is the purchasing power of that million dollars? Well, if the inflation is 15, you're looking at 850,000. And in five years, you've lost about half of your purchasing power, which is what continues to happen as we go through quantitative easing and the government printing more money, more money, more money. So what do we do as far as looking for uh, the way out of this? Well, we can take a look at a hedge and a hedge traditionally has been something like gold, but I don't care, like I own gold and silver, okay? So all the gold, silver bugs, you know, get off me. Uh, I, I own it as well, but it's a poor, it's a really poor investment. It's really, if you want to call it a hedge, I suppose, but you're really not even, even taking up for inflation, it seems like. And you take a look here, this is the last 10 years. Uh, if you're looking at this as an investment, it's a very poor investment. We're looking at $1,800 November 2011, and right around November 2021, it's about 1800 bucks. So again, people will say, well, it's a great hedge and it's a store of value. Is it? I mean, I'm still going to hold on to it for a while, but a better play right now is crypto and digital assets. And to, to show my point, I mean, let's just take a look at the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, this one only goes back to 2013, but look at this. Bitcoin was 112 bucks in 2013. If I went to 2011, it was like a couple bucks. So if you take a look at that and then go all the way up to here, which one's a better store of value? I mean, as far as like even like an increase of value. So the CPI, the PPI, and those two indicators, that is bad news. And I think what's happening is, is when this was released, which was uh, yesterday, uh, there was a pretty big influx uh, as far as like people getting into Bitcoin, maybe even a flight out of gold. They put their money into this very scarce asset. Now, of course, the whales, 
doing what whales do, they took profits on that because they know people are going to come back in because guess what? Unfortunately, uh, we're the only game in town. So as time goes on, I think more people will start to understand just what it is as far as, uh, I mean, really getting into the meat and potatoes of like, what is inflation? What is the consumer price index? What is the uh, what is going on with uh, the actual purchasing power of the dollar and where's your money really being used up? And I really feel sorry for the people that really can't get into assets right now. I don't even understand about assets. My brother's being one of them. So uh, to really dig into uh, this topic and uh, help me understand or help us understand a little bit better. I've got uh, Jack Pre Singh. He is the founder of Minority Mindset. It's a great channel. He really gets into the mentality that you need to not have a scarcity mindset and really push yourself into uh, a whole other realm uh, as far as getting into investing. So I'm going to have Jag Priyan. Let's just jump right into that interview. Uh, I had to get somebody in here who has a, a better understanding of the, of the traditional finance side. So I want to introduce everybody to Jaspri Singh. He is the owner of the YouTube channel Minority Mindset. And like I said, he's got a great understanding of how to get rid of that scarcity mindset to where you can actually invest into really important assets. So Jaspri, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time to talk to us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on with you talking about all this crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. So so Jaspri, I know you've been doing a lot of things as far as traditional finance. You're getting into cryptocurrency. You're seeing where things could potentially go. But we just took a look at the CPI numbers, the PPI, the inflation. And like I said, I'm feeling pretty worried about where things are going as far as like the investor who can't get into assets. What do you see? What do you feel? What are things going on in the traditional like equities? Where are people trying to get their their hedge? And where do you think this is all going to lead to? Because I don't see this slowing down anytime soon. Sure. So inflation, it comes from the word inflate, increasing something. What are we inflating when we have inflation? We're inflating the monetary supply. When you inflate the monetary supply, the value of the dollar, our currency, goes down. It decreases your buying power. Now, this right. is interesting when you compare it to assets. You talk about equities, real estate, call it whatever you want. Uh, if the, the buying power of the dollar goes down, it makes buying these assets more expensive. So it becomes harder yeah. than for you to go out and, and buy stocks or real estate or even Bitcoin or gold, for that example, if you see high amounts of inflation because the buying power of your currency decreased. Now, you talk about you know what, what is potentially coming and what's going on. I can give you a little bit of a timeline because it kind of puts things into perspective. All right. In, in the early part of 2021, that was when people started to really become concerned about inflation. We were talking about inflation as soon as we started the money printer in 2020. But in 2021, that's in the media. And people really started to talk about it because around April of 2021, that's when consumers started to really start to feel the effects of inflation. In April, we had the highest inflation since 2008. And right. that was when the Fed and the government came out and they started saying that, don't worry, this inflation is transitory. We expect it to be gone, hopefully by mid-2021. Well, the mid-2021 came, June, July came, and inflation actually cooled down a little bit. It was still very high. But relative to where we were in the early part of 2021, inflation had cooled down. And that's when everyone was like, okay, this inflation isn't as bad as we would have thought. But it was just a little bit of a lull because then mm -hmm. in August, inflation started to pick back up again. September, inflation really started to ramp up again. And oh, then yeah. in October, where we saw the record 6.2 or 6.4% inflation yeah. in annualized right. And this was the highest inflation that we had seen in over 30 years. Then the first week of November, the Federal Reserve Bank came out again. Now, obviously, people are getting more worried because mm -hmm. the prices of things are not slowing down. They said that it would be done by mid-2021. Then they said it would be done by the end of 2021. So in the worst first week of November, the Federal Reserve Bank had a meeting. And Jerome Powell said that, again, Inflation is transitory. It's a little bit worse than what we expected. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect it to go away in 2022. Now, if they're right and inflation goes away and you know you don't do anything with your money, then it's 
it's not that bad of a problem because sure, maybe you lost a little bit of value to inflation in 2021, maybe a little bit in 2022, but if they're right, then no big deal. Hmm. But if they're wrong and you don't do anything, well, then the problems are significantly worse because if the Federal Reserve Bank is wrong and we do see inflation, high inflation, or even moderate to high inflation, well, what does that mean? Well, now the buying power of your savings and your earnings don't stretch as far. You make $5,000, but that $5,000 can't buy you what it could a few years ago. So that's when things become a concern because they could be wrong. You've seen them be wrong in the past. In oh, yeah. 2000, before the 2008 crash, Ben Bernanke came out in 2005 and said that there is no housing bubble. There's nothing to worry about. Then people started to get more worried and he just said, we might have a couple areas of housing uncertainty, which could cause some slowdowns in the housing market in some pockets, but these are just some neighborhoods in some pockets of the country. It's not widespread across the United States. And ultimately, the entire real estate market came crumbling down, which almost brought mm -hmm. down the entire financial sector. Then if you look back even before that, before the year 2000, Alan Greenspan was the then chairman of the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. Bank. And before the 2000 uh, dot-com bubble burst, he came out and said that there is no dot-com bubble. There is no stock market bubble. Time and time again, nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Then 2000 to 2002, the NASDAQ lost nearly 80% of its value because the dot-com bubble imploded. So the Fed can be wrong. Now, will they be wrong? I can't predict the future, but if they are, I want to make sure that I'm protected. And so that's where now, you know, right now cash is losing value in the low interest rate environment. So you want to make sure you're taking your cash and either, you know, you can buy investments, but then people are worried about, am I buying at the peak? Or you can buy some sort of inflationary hedges as a protection to protect you against inflation. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. So like when you talk about all these things and you talk about the hedge, the hedge, because that is the big thing. Well, there's actually a couple of things. First of all, people on, I, I think on my channel, your channel, they may not have the biggest trust of the government out there. They're like, maybe they're not telling me the 100% full story. So we'll just, yeah. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And the second thing is, as far as like the hedge against this inflation, like, Take it, how about this, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, what would be a great hedge against inflation as it was inflate, as you know, the same thing was happening uh, before? Gold was a great inflationary hedge right. uh, in the past number of decades. That, that was the traditional, I'm worried about inflation. I'm going to sell traditional equities. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into gold or I'm going to move my savings into gold. That was uh, traditionally the only way or the, or the most popular way that people would protect against inflation. Right. And now I think what's what's great about now is that we have these better, not better, we have options, right? We have options. So I know, Jesper, when you're when, when you're talking on your on your YouTube channel, you've been referencing cryptocurrency a little bit more. So so how do you see things play into it? And how do you see like the people that you have surrounded yourself with, which are probably more traditional finance people, what do they see? Do they see the same thing? They're like, no, the crypto is a scam and I'm gonna stay away from it. Well, I have spoke with a number of people on our YouTube channel. Um, I spoke with Robert Kiyosaki, the mm -hmm. author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and yeah. he um, is doesn't have a very good outlook on the economy. And for him, he is into cryptocurrency and physical gold. Right. I brought on uh, Raul Paul and Michael Saylor. We have to publish the video, but we just interviewed him. Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, uh, his company bought 114,000 Bitcoins in 2020, about $3 billion worth of Bitcoins. And uh, these guys are 100% in the crypto Bitcoin area where that, that is the only thing that they're doing. I also spoke to Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff is a very, very smart economist. Uh, he predicted the 2008 crash. He was, he was telling everybody he spoke at the, the mortgage bankers convention before the bubble burst and said that you know, this is this is the bubble that's going to burst told all the bankers there and he hates bitcoin he, he, he thinks it's going to zero uh, he's a gold guy so you know you have your the the underlying kind of tone on all of them is people are worried about inflation the question is what do you do again i can't predict the future 
that, that that's not the game that I play. Do I believe yeah. that there's a future in cryptocurrency? Absolutely. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I think there's a lot of future with the blockchain. I think there's a lot of future with the potentials of cryptocurrency. Um, now, I could be wrong, but but that's what I believe. So what do I do? Well, I own Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I also own physical gold. Yeah. And I have also moved a big chunk of my personal savings into uh, stable coins in an account that's sure. paying interest. So interest-bearing accounts. And the interest that I'm getting is, you know, 8 to 9% a year on my stable coins. So your yeah. audience is, is more well versed in crypto. So a stable coin is, is, is you know, one stable coin is one US dollar. If there's it's pegged to the US dollar, some of them are regulated. And you can cash out your stable coins anytime you want. Is it completely risk free? No, absolutely not. Something could happen to your stable coin. Something could happen to the interest bearing account. Something could happen. I mean, there's counterparty risk. People borrow money, they don't pay it back. So you have to understand that risk. But yeah. there's more opportunity now to protect and to grow just depending on whatever your goals are. Yep. And uh, I'll just leave it off like this. So we know there's a problem. We know that uh, the canary in the coal mine says that there is an issue coming up, and that is inflation. So the big thing we have to think of is the government may not tell us everything, and they don't really know. They would like to know. They, would, they think it's going to happen but nobody's for certain. So of course on this channel, do your own research. This is just between me and Jasper, this is just investment opinion, not investment advice. But me personally, I put a pretty good chunk of my net worth into not just cryptocurrency, but also I put some in gold and silver, land, real estate, my businesses. And I just kind of spread things around because you shouldn't really put everything just in one piece. But uh, I gotta tell you, there's a huge amount of, uh, there's an asymmetrical return upside for crypto. That's just how I see it. So Jasper, I want to say thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Any last words of wisdom for the people out there who are kind of on the fence as far as like, not just crypto, but just investing in general? Well, investing is how people become wealthy. That's how wealthy people stay wealthy. People are always worried about a market slowdown, a market crash. But over time, if you give your asset time enough, if you have a strong asset, it's chances are it will recover and grow the people that make the most money over the long term are the people that invest for the long term and so i mean savers are losing value in a, a low inflationary environment so just do your own due diligence get educated and you know watch more videos on financial education and you can always check out the minority mindset well, great segue and yes and i will link uh, minority mindset in the description but that's it for today so look uh, if you like today's video, found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing, just like Jasper, we've been talking about. Things are going to go pretty fast in the next couple of months, and I see fireworks. So that is it for today. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. And uh, me and Jazz, we'll see you on the next one.